We are Myth Vision. Did you read that? How? There's not just Paul and his Roman guard. You know, there's two or three of his friends plus all the other prisoners. You know, it, it, it's, it's just absurd. So somebody has sort of like an empty hotel in this Roman pool. Oh, yeah, we happen to be Christians. Come and stay with us a week. You know, it just doesn't work. And it parallels you know, the gospel some. Like this, what you just described, like param parallels Jesus in so many ways. Even in all of this, like even in like the Gospel of Mark, where the added part of the serpents, you can be bitten by tread on serpents or bitten by serpents. You can tell this is Pauline, but also him going to to before Herod. I mean, he went to a he went to a different Herod, but he ends up before Herod, and Herod's like, I don't see any problem with this guy, and you know he doesn't appeal to Caesar, so to speak. But later in the story. Doesn't take long before they're going. We're going to go to Caesar, the 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 Jews. So there's some weird parallels. They're not identical, but they're there. Yeah, the story, as you as you correctly point out, the story echoes earlier stories over and over and over. You know, the, the it's like, well, I've I've often used on my web, website. Why waste a good yarn? You know, they have a little little bit, little snippet of a story and they reuse it again and again and again. It echoes in all the other stories. And, 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 and it shows, you know, they're not even great original story writers. You know, they're not dreaming up a new wonderful story. They're just taking an earlier story and moving the furniture around a little bit. You know, that's all they're doing. And, what, and, what would and happen if, what would happen if we removed the book of Acts? I mean, even the Wii version, all that. What if we just removed the book of Acts? What would we know about this guy, Paul? Very little indeed. Very little indeed. We'd know something. Judging If we judge the, the epistles to be genuine, then we know something. But the, the story is then much, very truncated. It's really just around the shores of the Aegean. You know, he, 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 so there, there, there's, there's none of this uh, uh, drama. I mean, Acts is, is, is a... It's, a, it's almost like a soap opera, isn't it? It's a soap opera. It's, it's simple enough for the simplest of people to follow. You know, it's people coming and goings and, you know, it, but but it, 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 none of it has credibility as a historical event. That's, a, that's why, I mean, I don't care if people have a Christian religion and believe a lot of nonsense. What has it got to do with me? They can believe what they like. But it, it, but if we are looking at history, you know, then we've got to say there's nothing to substantiate this entire story. There really isn't. There really isn't. And I'd like, on occasion, I'd like to find something that actually, actually it sort of hit the button, that actually was genuine. But... What, what convinces me more than ever that it, none of it is, is the fact that nothing ever fits. Nothing ever fits in with real history. You look at, say, you know, the, the, the geography of the Holy Land and, and all the places where, well, we get, you know, drifted off on Jesus. But Jesus, of course, goes to all kinds of towns, but they're just the towns that we don't know of. All the towns that are there, well, they don't get mentioned, you know. I mean, we we have a big town called Sepphoris that's only a few few miles from, from Nazareth. That existed. That doesn't get mentioned. This little town called Nazareth. Well, that's the one that gets mentioned. Although we can't find any evidence that it was Nazareth at the first, in the first century. You know, why doesn't Paul go there? Why doesn't he go and see where his Lord was born? Well, perhaps he doesn't even know that story. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I, I really enjoy those type of ideas because it really screws the whole thing up when you don't see it like that, you know? Yeah, you've got to have um, I don't know, just a warm feeling that it's all really a true story and we're just trying to – we use our faith to make it all make sense. If we have faith, then, you know, you can square the circle, you know, you can – turn a triangle inside out you can you can do all kinds of things because well faith makes you know contradictions between the gospels oh well that's no real problem you know um you know we, we, we're not worried about that you know a little bit of this a little bit of that 
if you don't have that willingness to be gullible, then then then, then you you do have a real problem seeing this as a real story. What about Paul? <clears throat> I love this one. I'm sure you you got a few of these. Paul seems to be quite obsessed in many places with um, not only defending that he's not a liar, but also that he seems to poke at the super apostles. He, he, there's something wrong with, and, and this could be simply like these charlatans, like you said, if they're authoring this in the name of a guy named Paul, they may be trying to override the validity of an original movement by suggesting, ah, yeah, 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 you know, we know about them because he can't deny them something to keep part of this thing. But he seems to constantly talk crap about the 12 in a way. And most Christians overlook that, that he's like, oh, and the super apostles or, you know, claiming anyone who teaches another gospel other than the one in Galatians then the one he preaches, let him be a curse. He has to say that twice. So, and then he right then goes into the breath of Cephas and James, and it's like, what's your problem with these guys? You know what what's going on with these? And we have letters written by these people, which uh, once again here goes another people writing in the name of, and it's like, hold on. James wrote letters. Peter supposedly wrote letters. All these people are writing letters. Paul's writing letters. But Paul talks crap about this James guy who's in the same book, the canon, and this Peter guy is like a goon of this guy, James, and and somehow the church has rectified it by making the book of Acts coming later. Let's make this thing, you know, together. I doubt that if there were historical, if we were to just presuppose, let's just not argue that point for just a second. I bet, and you'd probably agree, that these guys never rectified never saw things eye to eye and never probably agreed the book of acts makes it appear like oh well paul came in and he took a nazarite vow or whatever it was and yeah yeah but, but acts is clearly an attempt to um heal rifts cover over divisions yes it is it it it, it also suggests what it's a later work. It's very clear because it's trying to do a tidy up, harmonizing uh, uh, operation on very irregular, badly fitting parts of what they've composited together. It's clear. I mean, if we bear in mind that the, the Christian story of, you know, first Jesus, then his disciples, then the, the, then, then, the, then the church follows, you know, in some hum, harmonious progression is, is all bogus. Right. You have various factions under various different names, Nazarenes and Marcionites and various church. They're all in competition. They're they're sort of competing with other non-Christian religions as well. And th 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 there's no harmonious story, but there are victors at certain stages. And, and if we allow in a period of at least a century there are certain stages where maybe a movement is popular at one stage. Ten years later, it's disappeared. You know, you just think of religious groups now. They move on. Look at the history of the Mormon church and how it's split into so many different, you know, latter day churches of different description because somebody jumps up and says, I want to be leader. And somehow, you know, there's, there's a rift. And there's a, a and, and a separate church is born. I mean, it happened back then as it happens now, you know, so. There, there, there is no, no, no real story as it would be intended, but there is a, 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 a whitewashed story, which, of course, yeah, you're absolutely right. Acts is that document that tries to do that, tries to present it all, and but it sets up a terrible contrast. If you know the contrast between Paul in his as he comes across from the epistles ascribed to him, and Paul as he appears in the Acts of the Apostle. You are looking at two different characters here. You know, the one in the Acts of the Apostle is a, a team player. You know, he's a good guy. He goes to the temple with the, the Twelve. But, you know, in his own, you know, as you say, Paul owed nothing to any man. No, it came from Scripture and his own inspiration and so on. So he's a bombastic bully the one who wrote epistles, but he's Mr. Nice Guy. 
you, actually, he has a very passive role. You don't worry about whether he's active or passive. He's taken places in Acts of Paul. He's delivered here. He's taken there. They took him back to Tarsus to get him out the way. You know, but the real Paul wrote epistles, he doesn't get taken anywhere. He, he's, the, he's the guy who, who decides where people go. So that's what happens when you try and harmonize what can't really be harmonized. Like Galatians, when he says, I told him to his face. Yeah, absolutely. And in, in Acts, it's like, you know, and and me, me and Peter were cool, and you know they they had questions, and and I I paid for the four guys as vows, and you know we're cool. And James was like, oh man, you're on the same team, cool, high five. All right, go go do what you were doing, man. You're cool with the law. And then Paul's like, screw the law, don't obey the law. The law's the enemy. It's like, dude, what is going on? Yeah, I totally agree. I think this is so. I love this stuff though because it really opens yeah. up my mind. But I mean, there is a there is a basic. I think, you know, reality, the fact, you know, Mark 1 of the story, not reference to the Apostle Mark, but Mark 1 of the story, you, Jesus appoints 12 men. He gives them the power over spirits and to heal people. You know, he, he, he commissions them to take the, take the faith across the world, right? And then you read, hang on, we're all on Paul now. They've sort of disappeared. They've been not only marginalised, they've been basically forgotten. I mean, seven of the, of, of the 12 don't even get any sort of write-up in the Acts of the Apostles. You know, they disappear. That's why probably very few Christians could name them. You know, they're, they're, just, uh, they're non-entities. They should be the most famous people in history, aren't they? You know, but no, then, then Mark 2 of the story is it's about Paul spreading the faith, not the 12 spreading the faith. So it's, it's a, a, a major rewrite. And I, I think... It illustrates, I think, by that stage, the church in the early twenty-second century, the church had, had set up its 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 little enclaves. It it's it's it had its little congregations. It had you know, the the beginnings of elders and bishops, and then it needed to legitimise where it had come from. They couldn't just say we've just devised a new religion. They had to give it a backstory, and 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 Paul was the backstory. That's and that's why you see Paul in the Gospels. I mean, it's it's this is a interesting uh, to me. It's just interesting because what really helped me originally deconstruct was when I saw patterns repeat themselves in Old Testament stories, and then saw it in the New. And that's what made me go, hold on, hold on. You're telling me that this literally happened. And it's happened literally three, four different times in this everything from the seventy twos and the numbers and the and even elements that played a role. You know, like in Moses' story it was like fire by day or fire by night and cloud by day. These same elements were in Elijah and Elisha's story, um, Moses and Joshua, and then of course John the Baptist were Jesus and the church. And I saw these patterns and themes from Adam and Eve to Abraham to and just said Dude, either God is so beyond, okay, that he, he somehow was able to do this, which I, when I was a believer, I mean, for crying out loud, you, you accept almost anything because you're like, this just makes it that much more brilliant. Or you go with the like more what plausible explanation is these guys knew their stories quite well and they knew how to write stories. And, you know, I watched the movie Iron Man and I can look and go, wow. I watched that movie Iron Man leaving there really wishing there was a real Iron Man that could do the things the video, the movie shows, you know? <laughs> like, I wish this is true, you know? Do we have that technology? Not yet, I don't think. But nonetheless, I'm like, dude, what if there is an Iron Man? You know, it's so hocus pocus, though. It's like abracadabra. So is there anything else about Paul that we should know that you, you can think of uh, that's some funny things? Because you bring, you bring light to it. I think it's funny that, you, you know... You don't just like, you know, point out issues. You kind of make it, I guess to say you poke fun at it. And I like that because you try to make humor. Well, I, I do I do that as a byproduct. Uh, the fact that it, it, it is so transparent. It is so silly in many ways. Um, yes, I should have been able to find evidence having gone all these different places where Paul went. And yet... You don't find evidence of the story. You find evidence of how the fraud was concocted. That's that's the evidence that you get. You know, the fact that you can find 
Paul's uh, elbow in about four different places in, in the Mediterranean, you know. You know, the fact that you know, this, this shipwreck on the island of Malta, well, that's only what the Roman Catholic says. The Roman Catholic Church says, Greek Catholic Church has an island in, 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 in off the coast of Dalmatia. That's where, you know. The, so, it's, well, which one was it then, you know? Well, it depends on which side you backed during the Crusades, you know, because when the Byzantines had those islands, it was there. But when, it, when, when the, 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 the Western armies took over, you know, it moved, it moved to Malta, didn't it? And, 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 and you just see the transparency of this damn story. The trouble is, of course, people don't want to get into that level of detail of really fact checking. You know, it's just, it, you know, there's a there's a promise there, isn't there? There's a promise there that you'll live forever if you accept Jesus. There's a promise that you'll meet your loved ones. You know, it'll all be happy, hunky dory. And if you're so damn committed to that idea, you're, you, you, you know, you, you, it, it makes it an uphill struggle. For those of us who, who say, well, look, let, tell me the truth, whatever the truth is, you know, I, I, that and, and, and of course, plus the fact people who push the, the, the religious agenda are making a good living out of it. That's, That's true. why, That's you, true. you know, That's true. even, you know, dear old Bart Ehrman, you know, he, he's proved many times how, how fraudulent the, the Christian story is, but he still clings to, oh, well, there's a new historical Jesus, yeah, yeah. you know. He knows which side his bread is butter, doesn't he? So, uh... <laughs> hey, hey, yeah, he's good at it. He's good at it. You know, I'd laugh if the uh, if the church has uh, locations for his foreskin. Can you imagine Paul, the apostle of Christ? His foreskin is located over here. I mean, this guy was so <laughs> against circumcision in his letters, and then he—it's just so crazy. That, but doesn't Acts even play out this funny, interesting role? This tells you, in my opinion, the church that the time the book that the book of Acts is written is clearly trying to say, you don't have to be circumcised. It's clearly saying this because Paul is arguing with Peter, and like I've heard this explained so many times, and this is a huge Protestant Catholic debate. This is from someone who comes from inside of the Kool Aid drinking box, okay. And while I was in there drinking this Kool-Aid, watching Catholics and Protestants debate, they argued every time. And the Protestants would point out something. You know, it's almost like, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Matthew uh, Dillahunte says, he says, if you want to know how a religion's wrong, ask another religion. Well, the, the Protestants will make this argument and go, oh, you say Peter had the keys of the, you know, like he's the first pope. You think he's the first pope. How did the first pope get it wrong then when Paul came up? Because it's really Paul against Peter. If you go to the Roman Catholicism, it represents Peter technically. And Paul, yeah. you know, represents the the Protestant or what Protestants really took over later. They always go to Paul and use really grace through faith, not of works. Well, I thought this was interesting that they make Paul rebuke Peter who handed Jesus hands the king the keys to the kingdom to. It's like What's going on here, dude? Yeah, 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 yeah. It, well, it, it, it makes you smile if you can think rationally about something which many people don't don't even want to be questioned. I mean, they don't want <laughs> this stuff questioned. And if they're uh, 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 sufficiently enlightened to um, uh, consider ideas, they'll be... Uh, They'll need huge amounts of convincing, huge amounts of convincing. You know, it, it's like you're asked, you're, they're presenting a silly idea, but they expect a huge quantity of very rational evidence ever to, you know, to question that idea, whereas it should be on the face of it questionable in itself. Question in itself, the, you know, the, you know, the 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 arguments made made for for religious claims, walking on water, whatever it might be, you know, that that is a questionable claim. You don't need a huge load of evidence to to prove that is wrong. But you know, religious people are, are so so committed that yeah, that's 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 the bell. We, we that's a, that's that's the, 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 what we have to take on that challenge, don't we? I, leg I, mean, I legitimately dealt with this. <laughs> what you're saying here, just the other day, I told the guy that, you know, scholars, 
it's pretty much a universal consensus that critical scholars say Abraham didn't exist. And this guy wrote me, literally, and I had to post it in this myth, mythicist room, mythicist versus historicist uh, Jesus room. And he says, that's a lie. The, the historical Abraham did exist. I know because Jesus, I've met Jesus. Jesus, the historical Jesus, took me to see the historical Abraham and I met him. You may not believe me, he said, but this is the case. And I just simply, being kind, wrote back, were you taking dimethyltryptamine or are you on <laughs> drugs? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, th thankfully, we, we probably don't have too many of that type of Christian in this country because actually Christianity is quite a, quite a minority cult within within Britain, you know, and, and within Europe, I'd say. You know, as we said, I think on the last time we spoke, it's America that's holding out for Christ. You know, you, you, you're you sort of regimented and, 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 and so conditioned to believe uh, in what is basically a very primitive set of ideas i mean you know we've had the, the 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 enlightenment we've had the age of science you know science now plots the 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 furthest reaches of the universe and to believe in this you know god from the bronze age and and and, and a, a a quaint but copied copied story regurgitated story with just a different hero from two thousand years ago um <laughs> Well, men of science don't entertain it, do they? <laughs> men, it, the educated elite don't entertain it, it but, it, but uh, the popular, the populace uh, entertains this idea. I think um, a lot of it applies to patriotism. And it, look, my father, and I'm not against that. My father's a Green Beret. He retired Special Forces. But I do had, the, growing up, I had this sense of, Connecting my pride, American pride, and being pro-military, pro-America to my Christianity. And the, the fact that they, I guess you could say politically intertwined, you know, I grew up very conservative. Uh, I no longer vote. Now, I, I get people who who are on the opposite <laughs> side who are looking at me going, you stupid. You, the non-voters are the reason why we didn't win, you know, and this and that. I'm like. It's for me. I mean, I, I couldn't vote not long ago because I was a drug addict who made some mis mistakes. You know, I lost my rights, but I'm yep. kind of glad I did because personally, I don't even I don't know. I don't want to get involved in it because too many. It feels like religion. I'm not look, I'm not trying to say that there aren't political things we should probably, you know, try to stand up for and vote for that. We want change in the world, especially when it comes about freedom of religion and thought and, and, and not teaching that Jesus created the earth 6,000 years ago in school. Okay. That, that or don't dumb our kids down. Um, at the same time, I feel like it's the same veracity that comes into Paul and all these things that we do religiously and arguments and debates is the same thing politically. I witness in America of Republican versus Democrat. And it's like, yeah, we're not saying the name Jesus, but it feels much like religion. And I just, I'm like, ah, I try to, I, 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 I'm happy. I'm happy where I'm at. No, I, I empathize with you with you say that you don't vote because, you know, most, most of my life I've never voted, to be honest. You know, to me, I, I never saw any, any political movement that, that I could endorse so hard, hard, hardly to even go and vote. You know, it's, it, and our politics has become weird in the same way that your politics has become weird. Dare I say, your politics is even weirder than ours, you know. But, it's so you know. bad, riots. I mean, like, we're talking hate. If you voted for the opposite side, there's literal hate of you. It is yeah. it is like the 50s with black and whites, except it's no longer a race thing, so to speak, even though there is some of that some places. It's now become what's your – are you wearing an elephant? Are you wearing a – you know, because you had the Republican symbol? Or are you wearing a Demo – I just stay out of it, man. I just, uh, I wish that it wasn't like that because I'd love to go vote and say, hey, I feel like I believe in what these people are doing all the way across the board. But, you know, choose which evil, lesser evil, or I just kind of don't get involved, if that makes sense. I do this right here. I deconstruct people and people who watch this go, wow, okay, I no longer have to think like that. I think you're doing a, a, a grand service. You know, you, you, you really are. And you have a... I dare I say, 
you have a lovely manner it's 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 it, it, and it's and it's great to talk to you it really is it really is you you have an open mind uh, but you're but you're sensible <laughs> i try to be i don't want to be mean <laughs> i'm trying to sound patronizing but you know I, I sometimes get interviewed by like i've been invited to appear on christian stations and and you 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 from the word go you you know it's like all oh, right we, we we're gonna have an issue here <laughs> you know <laughs> i love that though because i know exactly what you're talking about i know exact i actually was invited to speak on a show recently with a guy named asher and uh and he's a rabbi and now he's a rationalist yeah. rabbi which he even – he's like, what are you? I'm like, I'm agnostic. I guess by definition I'm an atheist though because I don't worship a god. But whether there is something out there, divine or something, I don't know. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't believe in that. And he's like, well, I'm an uh, agnostic even though I do believe that there may be a god, the god of the Bible, which he – you know, the Hebrew scriptures is Yahweh. And he went in this interesting thing. I had never heard a Jew take this time, type of position. He even goes so far as only the five books, and he says – that the prophets were only written during a time and they were only meant for a specific time for specific people. However, he believes that what happened is when they took away rights to read Torah to the Jews, the Jews used or Israel used the prophets to get as much of the law out of the prophets as they could till they were allowed to go back to five books and they elevated the prophets on a level equal to Torah when they never were. So there's so mm. many complexities just in the the presuppositions to what we find in the New Testament. It's like, okay, dude, like if you really just think this thing made it and it was good to go, you got more faith than anyone I've ever met because that's serious faith once you start seeing the critical stuff we're looking at here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, most talking of the Jews, most Jews that of my acquaintance in this country are actually quite secular. You know, they, I, 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 it, it sometimes uh, I get a little bit annoyed when 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 people speak of the Jews, specifically the ancient Jews, as if they all agreed and they all agreed with their rabbi. You know, they all agreed with the the temple priests, like they were just one herd. Now there was maybe that tendency, but you know, by guys, there were lots of divisions within the Jews. A lot of Jews became Romans. They embraced the pagan religions. You know, it, 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 the idea that there was just one homogenous Jew is just ridiculous. Just ridiculous. And some some most outstanding writers have been atheistic Jews for Christ's sake. You know, that's so. true. Ken, Ken, how can people uh, help support what you do or get your book? Is there a website? Is there a YouTube channel? What do we got here, boss? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's let's not forget. <laughs> get the book. It's a very thick book. <laughs> not, lots of information. Uh, but it's very it's very readable. It's very readable. That, that's the, probably the most helpful thing people could do. Because uh, at the end of the day, um, I don't need a new television. But you know, it's it's nice that, that the people get the word out. You know, they, 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 that gives a, like you say, many people will make the comment. I hadn't thought of that. You know, they just hadn't challenged even 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 just a very basic proposition. There was Jesus never existed. It might oh, didn't he? I've never thought of that. I assume because everyone goes around speaking about Jesus, he he was a historical character, but he's no more real than you know William Tell or you know uh, 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 King Arthur, uh, all the other mythological characters of history. You know, is but, but but of course they don't have a religion stuck upon them, do they? I mean, I'm often struck. It's, it's getting into a little bit of the detail, but I'm often struck the difference between following what the Jews did or didn't do, and maybe, say, the tribe of the Iceni in eastern Britannia at the same time. You know, Nero had to send his legions into Britain to knock the... the, knock the... Now, would we embrace an ancient British god? You know, would, 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 would we entertain that there was someone walking around? You know, it's just so arbitrary that this story out of a little province, sub-province in the Roman Empire, produced the world's truth. It's, yeah. simply, it's simply an historical accident. It's a simple, that's all it was, you know. Constantine, Constantine was backing uh, Apollo. Then he thought, 
give give this Jesus God a, a chance, you know, and, that, and and suddenly the church was in there, into the corridors of power. I think there was a. I personally think that there was a um, a temptation to go toward a monotheistic uh, tendency that that unified one thought, because one might go, well, Paula, why are you leaving out uh, such and such, or why are you leaving out? Why not come at it from a view that eliminates all gods, so you can't have your different flavors, and everyone tastes the same cup of tea. So let's let's get under one flag, one idea, one mind, and and everybody could be controlled with the same pretty packaged. Yes. I, I mean, look, yeah. and Jesus is so similar to other. We did that show with Doctor Bob. He's so similar to these other pagans that some of the church fathers actually argue that point. Hey, just like you believe in Apollo and his virgin birth, uh, you know, believe in Jesus and his virgin birth. It's like, oh, that, well. Yeah, why can't I? I? I could see a pagan going. You know what? Good point. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to your pagan, or or he probably didn't call it pagan. We call it pagan, but he, I'll go check out your god then. Cool. They were into that stuff, so yeah. The the the, the polytheists were both tolerant of each other, but had very similar ideas to what the, the Christians tried to monopolize and did monopolize, and then their bishops became the top dogs mm. and and it was a totalitarian system or an attempt to force a totalitarian system on the roman empire and that was to the roman emperors very appealing you know yeah but very damaging too they collapsed oh. not long after that so absolutely absolutely <laughs> <laughs> if anything yeah. we can take away is guys be skeptical Check out Ken Humphrey's book. I appreciate you joining for the show. This was a wonderful podcast. It's been a pleasure. You take care now. Yep. And if you guys have any questions, you have any ideas, anything you want to hear from Ken, let me know. I'll try and prepare for the next show that we do with him. I'm always a fan of his work. And obviously what you produce is not only educational, but you have a sense of humor about it. And that's what I appreciate. You're not just uh, rude and mean. You know, you... You're rude, mean, and nice at the same time. (laughs) Thank you so much. Well, we are Mythvision.